Good morning and welcome to Freedom Zone Worship Center. We're so glad to have you be a part of the service with us this morning. Uh, thank God for you. Pray you've had a awesome week upon um, last week and that you're looking for even greater things this week. Let us start out this morning with uh, prayer. Father, we come before you in the name of your son, Jesus, asking that you have mercy upon us, O oh God, asking that you forgive us and cleanse us, asking, O oh God, that you open our ears and our hearts that we might receive of you today. We ask that you bless us, O oh God, that we forever humble ourselves before you, O oh God, that we might become closer unto you. We ask that you bless all, all those under the sound of my voice right now, Father God, every person, every household, every family. We thank you for all that you have done and all that you're going to do, Father God. Lord God, we ask that you continue to create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit that we might be pleasing in your sight. We thank you right now. We give you the glory. We give you the praise, O oh Father God. And let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts, O oh God, be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, our God, our strength, and our redeemer. We thank you right now in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible says for men to always pray and not faint, so we must always continue to pray. Once again, we thank you for being a part of the service this morning and thank you for uh, your, your, your uh, support. Um, we had been talking about, uh, as before, going through some dark places in life. Today, I want to talk with us, though, um, concerning the uh, subject of, and it's under, still under that same uh, uh, um, series about the dark places and going through dark places and hardships and in life but um uh, the subtitle today uh we're going to talk about when god doesn't answer your prayer when god doesn't answer your prayer because many times uh, and anytime you're talking about trouble and anytime we're talking about hardship and anytime we're talking about uh trouble and struggles and dark places or going through things in life Usually that's when we pray the most. That's when we pray the most, the hardest and the most intense. And sometimes that's when we do the majority of our fasting. It's when we're going through things or major things, the hard things in life. Uh, and so we want to look at when God doesn't answer your prayer, when you're praying and sometimes doing all we can and, and, and God doesn't answer the prayer, especially the way we want it to be, uh, uh, to turn out uh, sometimes. So we want to go, if you would, with me to 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel, beginning at the 12th uh, verse. 2 Samuel, uh, 12th chapter, rather. 2 Samuel, 12th chapter. And we're going to begin at the 15th verse. Again, that 2 Samuel, the 12th chapter, beginning at the 15th verse, and talking under the subject of when God doesn't answer your prayers. Uh, and, and hopefully, after today, we'll... We'll look at things a little different and, and hopefully um, uh, act a little different or, or move in a different direction um, concerning God answering or not answering rather our prayers the, the way we would like them uh, to be answered. Because sometimes it's, um, we're praying, we're, we're studying, we're believing, and God still doesn't answer, um, they still doesn't answer the prayers and, or answer them the way we would like him. To, um, to answer them. So especially, like I say, going through struggles, going through tough times and, 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 and having God not answer um, our prayers and how do, we, how do we handle it? So we're going to look and to the word as we should always do. Look to the word and see what is the example given to us of how we should conduct ourselves. Uh, what's the proper actions when uh, God doesn't answer our, our, our doesn't answer our prayers, because all of us and all of you that are listening have had times when you prayed and God didn't answer um, the prayer, and so now we can look at ourselves and evaluate ourselves and see if we handle it, handle it rather the same way as the example that we read from uh, from from the Word. So it's again Second Samuel the twelfth chapter, beginning at the fifteenth verse. And for those that are here, when you have it, say Amen. Okay, Second okay. um, Samuel 12, chapter 15 through the 23rd verse. And it reads, Then Nathan departed to his house, and the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bore to David. 
and it became ill. The child became ill. So dealing with sickness, um, dealing with the sickness of the child, dealing with the sickness uh, of David's son. So a parent dealing with the sickness of a, a son, a family member dealing with the sickness of another family member. Um, but it's, the child became ill. David therefore pleaded with God. David therefore pleaded with God for the child. Have we ever pleaded with God? I have. And I'm sure many of you have. I pleaded with God. God, if you just do it this time. God, if you bring them through this time. God, if you bless them to recover this time. God, if you change this situation this time. God, if you pull me through this time. God, if you help us to save the house this time. God, if you help us get through this this time. David therefore pleaded with God for the child. And David fasted and went in and lay all night on the ground. David fasted and prayed and laid before the Lord. And sometimes with us, it's called laying prostrate before the Lord. And sometimes it's stretched out on the floor as you're praying and talking to God that, that things would change and, and, and realizing that it's in his hands that if he does not change it, then you're not going to like the outcome. And so like I said earlier, many times, and we've been talking about going through dark places in life, many times that's when we fast and pray the most. Some people have lost weight during the times of struggle and times of trials, not because they were intentionally trying to watch what they were eating. It was because sometimes things get so intense that, our, that the appetite leaves. And, and, and I've got to hear from God. I've got to hear from God. I don't have time to eat. I don't have, I don't have a desire to eat because I need to get in touch with God. I need to hear from God. I need God to move on this situation as serious as serious can be. It's painful. It's uncomfortable. My loved one's life is on in the, hanging in the balance. My life may be hanging in the balance. The doctor given news. Or, and, and so the, the, the intensity of that prayer, prayer and fasting. David prayed and he fasted and lay on the uh, uh, Lay, on, lay down on the ground on the floor all night long all night long and, and, and many of us and sometimes we may not be the ones that run to church every Sunday and all that but when times get serious we get serious and start praying and fasting and, 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 and seeking God's face and, and, and looking for God to move on our behalf because it's needed and if God doesn't do it if God doesn't do it then it's not going to be the way we would like it to turn out. So we're willing to sacrifice that meal. We're willing to sacrifice that food. And I, I, I think about people going through situations where, again, the child's sick, the loved one is sick, or the marriage going through some situations, or relationship with sisters and brothers going through some situations, and how intense that is upon us. People, people even uh, things change even uh, concerning their, comple their, their, their uh, complexion and everything else as they're intense. You know, you think about Jesus himself in the garden and said he, he prayed and until he sweated drops of, great drops of blood. That's intense praying for intense situations. And many times we've been through and many people right now are going through some intense situation and sometimes nobody else know what it may be but you know and you know you're praying and and, and but when what about when god doesn't answer our prayers and that's what we again talking about um but he lay on the ground all night long so the elders of his house arose and went to him and raised him up from the ground but he would not nor did he eat food with them and I, and I think about it and then going about seven days. With, with me, I think about, I had a, 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 a you know, my, my mom passed away. It's been about 18 years. And we prayed and we prayed and we prayed and we prayed. And we're talking about believers, Christians, born again. And we, we prayed and we prayed. And, and then recently, about two years ago, I had a nephew that, that was in a situation and hanging in the balance. And, 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 and I, we prayed and some of the young people prayed, I know harder than they had ever prayed. And you could feel the presence of God there. You could feel the, 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 the weight and, the, and we're turning down the plates and we're praying and praying and praying and praying and praying. And just as with David, then on the seventh day it came to pass that the child died. 
On the seventh day, so that means David prayed and fasted and lay before the Lord and stretched out on the ground for seven days. But in, in, in seven days, the child still died. And we're talking about when God doesn't answer your prayers. When God doesn't answer your prayers, what do you do? How do you react? What's your reaction? What is your attitude? Because many times we're looking at it. In fact, sometimes we get issues with God. Because he doesn't answer our prayers the way we want them to be answered. But we've got to remember that we're still Christians and that God has given us a road map to how to handle everything. It doesn't mean it's easy, but we're going to look at how David handled this situation, this loss, this hardship. This dark time that he had been going through dealing with his child and he fasted. He fasted for seven days. He laid out before the Lord. He prayed. And the same thing with you. David did that, but I know many times we've done the same thing. We prayed. We fasted. We were, there's a song about when you've done all you know how to do and gone to every service and got in every prayer line and, and called everybody you know that know the words of prayer to pray for you and, 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 and telling people to fast for you. And when you've done all that prayer and all that fast, when God doesn't answer that prayer that you prayed, even concerning maybe the house, the car, and all that, and we'll get more into that. But when God doesn't answer that prayer, and you know everybody else is looking at you and wondering, you say you know the Lord, and, and you're going through a situation with your uh, relationship with your children or your, your, your relationship in your marriage, and people are looking at like, okay, well, they say they know how to pray. To, to pray, rather, let's see what how this thing turns out then. After seven days, on the seventh day, it came to pass that the child died. And the servants of David were afraid to tell him that the child was dead. For they said, indeed, while the child was alive, he spoke to him. Uh, we spoke to him and he would not heed our voice. How can, how can we tell him that the child is dead? He may do some harm. They were scared to even come tell him the bad news that the child had passed. Same as with us sometimes. People are scared to come tell us because they think we're going to get it, uh, going to go overboard with it. And, 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 and in fact, on both sides, thinking you may get mad about something that can happen. Um, uh, you know, I, I accidentally bumped your car, wrecked your car, whatever. But also that you, you, you may not uh, be able to handle the fact that somebody that you love dearly has passed on. You may, not, you, you, you may lose all hope or may pass out and, and and not sure how you may handle the situation so so here it is with, with them scared to come to david but let, let's look a little further in in here say so when david saw that his servants were whispering david perceived that the child was dead and many times with us when you start looking at the behavior and actions of people around you a lot of times they already tell you what's what what's going on what didn't happen if, if, if you have a loved one in the military and the military chaplain or, or those two military people that pull up in front of the house before they get to the door you already pretty much know what they're coming there to say if a loved one is in the hospital and they're not they haven't been doing that well and your phone ring at 12 or 1 o'clock at night and before you even talk with the person you pretty much know what they're calling to say you know, so it's, it's it, we can read the signs on a, sometimes a lot of things around us, just as David perceived. He, he perceived that the child was already dead before they said anything. Therefore, David said to his servants, is the child dead? It, 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 it is what I've been praying for and fasting for and looking for God to do. How, it, 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 is, it, is it done with? You know, is it all my, my, my prayers, um, but God didn't answer the prayer. So now he know that all that, that I fasted and I prayed and, and the prayer wasn't answered the way I wanted it to be answered. Now, and many of us were in that same spot. We prayed and we prayed and we prayed and, and we're realizing sometimes that the prayer was not answered the way we wanted it to be answered. My, 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 my nephew, when, 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 when it was, uh, everything was all said and done and we realized that it wasn't going to go the way we've been praying for it to go. And I must let you know that that was a heavy, 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 heavy load. And it was, it was, it was devastating. It was, it was, it was hard to take and accept and all of that stuff because the human side is still reacting. And, and it, it, but when we, when we look at it, it couldn't have been any easier for David. But David recognized that my prayer is not going to be 
answered this time the way I wanted it to be answered. And I know they told you when they told us when we went to church that everything would be okay and, and give it up to Jesus. He'll make it all right. And late in the midnight hours, he'll turn it around. And, and that if you just trust him and do not doubt, he'll surely bring you out. And everything's going to work out for the good of them that love the Lord. But I want to let you know that there's some realities in this life. And the Bible still covers it. God is not a bad God because he doesn't answer the way we want him to answer. God is not a bad God because he doesn't do everything the way we want him to do it. God is not a bad God because he don't straighten out everything the way we want him to straighten it out. God is not a bad God because he don't allow you to keep everything that you may once have had. That doesn't make him a bad God because he's still God and still in control of it all. But it means that sometimes Sometimes the answer is not the way we would want it. When God doesn't answer your prayer, and, and, and many of us, even right now, some of, a lot of you listening to me, that, 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 that it's, 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 it's a matter of how we handle things as Christians. How we handle things as Christians when, when the, we don't get the job that we've been praying to get. We don't get the promotion that we've been praying to get. We don't get the house sometimes that we've been naming and claiming. The car is broken and it's, and we're hoping it's just a, a, a $10 fix and it's something beyond what we can handle right now. The loved one in the hospital and going through things and it doesn't turn out the way we want it to turn out. David said, is the child dead? And here's where we really start learning and they said, he is dead. He is dead. That's, that, that's not the news we want to hear. That's not what we want to hear. And many times that's not what we even want to accept. Sometimes we live in denial that God have answered, but it wasn't the way we wanted him to answer. So many times we start playing tricks in our own head. Trying to make it to be something that it is not. I, I, I've seen situations where people have been e e evicted. Okay, they'd have told you you've got to get out and you refuse to pack up anything. Because I'm, I'm not going to accept this. Well, they're going to set yourself out by the street. They're going to set yourself out by the street. So why not pack it up and go ahead and move it while you can? I know people that when it comes to uh, the, the, the car, uh, 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 and I know someone that do some repo work. And, but sometimes people... They haven't been able to make the car payment. I know you love God, but you're behind on the car payment. They say they're going to pick it up. And you love God and you're praying and you're praying and you're fasting. You're doing all of that, but they're going to pick up that car. So why not take your stuff out of the car and not let it stay in there so that when the car is picked up, they have all your stuff also. Even though you're praying, even though you're fasting, when they sent you the notice and said they're going to repo the car, don't live in denial and, 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 and leave your, 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 I know some people have left all kinds of stuff in the car. The good stuff, the, the things that they need, only for it to be repoed. And I've looked at some and there's Bibles and, 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 and notes and gospel CDs and, and all this stuff, this, all this Christian stuff. But that car has been repoed. They could have had their stuff with them. But they didn't choose to, to accept that oh, th this isn't going to turn out the way I want it to turn out. They lived in denial. So here, here it is. And, and let's, 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 let's really try to learn here from David on when God doesn't answer our prayers, what reaction that we can take. And what reaction that we can take now. And don't by any means, mess, don't, 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 don't dare tell anybody that, that Pastor Brown said that, 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 that Pastor Brown, William, Keith, what did you, what's your name you call me? That, that I said, oh, it's just easy. Y'all just do this and y'all just do that. No, but I still am saying what the word says and the examples that God give us. God never said it would be easy. Just as the son said, nobody told me that the road would be easy. But that he haven't brought us this far to leave us. When God doesn't answer our prayer, that doesn't mean God has left us. When God doesn't answer your prayer, it doesn't mean God has left you. When God doesn't make it allow it to turn out the way you want it to turn out, doesn't mean, or you and I want it to turn out, doesn't mean that God has left us. Doesn't mean that God has been diminished being God at all. Doesn't mean that God has any less power. Now here we go in the 20th verse. 
David arose from the ground, washed and anointed himself, and changed his clothes. David arose from the ground, washed him, washed and anointed himself and changed his clothes. David started making a change. When God didn't answer the prayer, that he that didn't answer his prayer and things didn't go the way he wanted it. David started making a change. He got up and washed his face. Now think about us sometimes. Things tragedy happens, and especially when the loved one passed, we may get up and, and, and start on the outside wash our face and they dress up and we do that and go to the, the greet the people and to go to the funeral uh, we, we do that we do that but he it said he, uh, he, he he changed he anointed himself he didn't just wash his face and change his clothes he anointed himself meaning that i'm still connected to the to, to the god on high i'm still a christian i'm still connected to this god that i've been serving it didn't turn out the way i wanted it to turn out but i am still connected to god so he anointed himself anointed himself meaning that i'm still going to walk in the power of god i'm still going to trust the god that i serve he anointed himself and we go a little further because a lot of times we just change that things on the outside and inside we're mad and inside we're bitter, inside we're, 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 we're confused, and inside we have an issue with God. He anointed himself, changed his clothes, and he went into the house of the Lord and worshipped. Now we're talking about when God doesn't answer our prayers. How many times have you went and worshipped when God didn't answer your prayer? How many times have we still gave God our best praise and honored God even at times when he did not answer things the way that we wanted him answered? When we got to know, when the person still passed on, when we still lost the house, when we still went through things, when our body still ate with pain. How many times have we still worshipped? Worship, not tell people how bad it is. I don't know if I can get through this. And why would God do this to me? What have I done to God to make him treat me so bad? Why couldn't God just answer that? All that power God had. Why couldn't he just do this? Why is he doing it for other people? They went through the same thing. And look what God did. But look right here. He won't do it for me. So I'm mad at this God that did this to me. And, 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 and I'm envious of other people when I look at them and their loved one is still alive and this and that. My mother was 59 years old when she passed here. And I must admit that we looked at that as that is too young. That is too young. That is too young. But it didn't change a thing. Didn't change a thing by us thinking that and us saying that. And then look at other people and, and, and still have their loved one, their parent and, and parents and, 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 you, and, 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 and you have to realize that God is still God. God is still God. I'm going to be happy for those that have their loved ones. I'm going to be happy for those that when they pray, God turned, it turned out a different way. I'm going to still give God the glory and give God the praise. David worshiped God after he got the answer he did not want. David worshiped God, even though God didn't answer his prayer. After all that fasting, all that praying, day and night laying that before God, then God still did not answer. Many times we fooled ourselves and fooled other people that if God don't answer everything the way we want it, then there's something wrong that, that he don't, he, he's mad at us and, and, and he, he's out to get us and all of this stuff. But David, David had messed up early and all this stuff uh, early on concerning that particular child and Uriah and all that. But then we know that with us and everything and about when you did something wrong, but we prayed and prayed and prayed. David sincerely prayed. David sincerely prayed. David repented. See, when we repent, God restores us. So it doesn't mean God doesn't hear our prayers. God heard David's prayer. God saw David. Just like God hear our prayers and God see us. God see us and God knows. When God doesn't answer our prayers, here it is, David worshipped. David worshipped. Then he went to the house, then he went rather to his own house, and when he requested, they set food before him and he ate. David washed himself, cleaned himself up, changed his clothes, anointed himself, went and worshiped God, and then went home and ate. Then went home and ate. After anointing himself, after changing, after worshiping. What do we do? What do we do? We've been talking about going through dark places in life. What do we do when things don't change the way we want them to? What do 
do we do when God doesn't answer our prayers? What do, what, what, what do we do? We might do the first part and bathe and change clothes, but many times, again, we secretly hold ill will towards God. Why you didn't do it? Why you didn't do it? You know you could have, but so but, but, but why, why, why you didn't do it, God? Why you didn't do it? You know you could have done that. The same way we tell people. You go, some, you go to somebody, you know they have money, and you ask them for $20, and they say no. And they have the right to say no. But then we turn around a lot of times and they know they could have done that. All that money they have, they could have. Why didn't they go in and give me that money? They could have did this. They could have gave me that a ride. They got two cars in the yard. And, 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 and why would they not do it? They have the right to do with their stuff and say yes or no. The same as God has the right to do with what he owns which is all of us, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein, that God has a right to do with what, do with his own what he chooses. But just like we have ill will and have issues with people, we have ill will and have issues with God. Then his servant said to him, now he's, he, 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 what is this that I have done? You fasted and wept for the child while he was alive, but when the child died, you arose and ate food. Your rolls and ate food. When God didn't answer your prayers, you got on up, washed your face, changed your clothes, anointed yourself, went and worshiped God, and then came home and said, you're hungry, give me something to eat. See, and the issue is, that's we'll say, because people say, oh, they act like they didn't care at all. They act like they didn't care at all. Well, now, what you want me to do doesn't mean that's what I have to do. In the 22nd verse, but he, 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 you know, they said, now you're eating. And here's what David said. And he said, while the child was alive, I fasted and wept. I fasted and cried. I turned down my plate. For I said, who can tell whether the Lord will be gracious to me that the child may live? That God may, God has the power to change this situation. And he just may do it. He just made doing any situation we find ourselves in. God has the power to change that situation. And while we, and we should pray and we should fast and we should trust God. That's what we should do. That's what we should do. But now when God doesn't answer our prayers, especially the way we want it to be answered, what do we do then? What do we do then? You see, a whole lot of Christians do a whole lot of Bible, Bible, Bible talk and all and, and, and religious talk but when things don't go the way we don't we want them to go a life gets hard because we're talking about going through dark places in life when we go through situations and circumstances and tough times in our lives what do people see then as us as christians what do we show forth then that's here that david said that he, he did that i prayed i you know, I, 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 I fasted and I did all that because I knew God could change the situation. But when God did not change the situation, God chose not to change the situation, I'm going to still trust that same God. That once again, he said, and while the child was alive, I fasted and wept, for I said, who can tell whether the Lord will be gracious to me that the child may live? But now he is, now he is dead. Why should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him, but he shall not return to me. And one of the last things that I want to realize is that many times in our life, when we deal with situations, when God does not answer our prayers, especially the way we want him to, we get stuck. We never look beyond that. We get stuck. We never look beyond that. Here it is, David is looking futuristically. He said, now, that's done with. That's done with. God did not answer it the way I wanted it answered. And so it's done with. It's done with. The child has is gone. I, I, I love one sometimes that when, once they're gone, okay, they're gone. But God didn't leave us with, with, without an outlet. He didn't leave us without hope. 
David said that he can't come to me, but I will go to him. There is still a future in this relationship with my son, even though he is gone. But the, 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 the future relationship is that I'm going to one day go to where he is. The same way I look at with my, my, my mother, my godmother, different ones, that one day my grandfather, aunts and uncles, all my loved ones, that one day I will go to where they are. They're not coming back here to us, but one day I will go to where they are. It's not lost. It's not hopeless. It's not the end of the story. God didn't answer the way I wanted it. God didn't answer my prayers, but he gave me still hope to know that I'm still going to one day go to where they are. So when we start talking about when, when God doesn't answer our prayers, do we stop looking ahead? Do we stop looking ahead? You, your house got repoed. Why are you still talking about, oh, when we had that house? That was the best house we would ever had. What about looking ahead to the next house? Oh, they repoed the car, the car broke down, and we couldn't pay to get it back started. It's been junk now. All you can talk about is when you had that car. What about ahead the next car? Oh, they, 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 he left me or she left me, and, and now my life is just nothing, and, and, and I can't ever get it back together because I love them so, and I love them, and y'all don't know how much I prayed and how much I fasted, but the truth of it is, you did fast, you did pray, but they chose to keep going a different way. What are you going to do now other than say, okay, I'm going to fix myself up, I'm going to praise God and worship God and anoint myself and look to see who God sends my way that is truly righteous and truly deserving of me. And not just talking about what I once had. What I once had. What I, everything is looking back. Some things we've lost in life and we can't get it back. But we can look ahead. We can look ahead. David let us know that. Now he's dead. That situation is dead. That situation is closed. It's closed, it's closed, it's closed. You, 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 you can't go back to that now. And I say to all of us that have lost some loved ones, and we cried and we prayed and we fasted, but we've got to let that go and look to meet them again and not only look back and allow our lives to be stagnated and stopped at that point in our life when they were there. Because they can't come back to us, but we will go to them. If we live right, if we walk up right before God, if we trust God, we'll see them again. God will bless you. In fact, he said that just like with Job, he'll give you more than what you had earlier. You think about Job, he, all his children died, but then he got more children. That doesn't mean it, it got to give you birth more children. You may end up adopting or you may end up somebody gravitating towards you. Stop pushing everybody away and acting bitter and everything else. You don't know who God's trying to send your way for you to mother or you to father. Start looking ahead. Move on, move on, move on. When God doesn't answer your prayer and God will let it, like, like with this with David, it was final. God has asked. God has allowed it to go the way he would have it to go. And it wasn't the way David wanted it to go. We've got to realize in our own lives when God allowed things to go other than the way we want it to go, that we've got to let it go and move on. Let it go and move on. Stop calling and hounding and running down people that don't want to be a part of your life. People that don't want to treat you right. Sometimes people, they don't care nothing about themselves or God or you. Don't live in the past. Don't live in the, in, in the past. Let's look ahead. Look to the future. Look for what's next. Look for what God is bringing about the next time. Look for God's next plan for your life. Yeah, it's a hard place. It's a dark place. But what does God have ahead? I, I, I tell you, because see, the, the things and stuff can be replaced, but cover us when we leave here. I know some people that I love dearly that's dealing with some medical issues that we've been praying about and fasting about and we know that we need God to move. But we have hope. We have hope. Because see, when, 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 when you, you think about it and I'm going into the one maybe about the transition or move on, but in your life you think we're like, okay, Ray Charles, he lost his sight, but he moved on and played the piano and started singing. I know other people that lost their sight and started ministries. 
I know people that lost, you know, limbs and they're still moving around. They're still doing more than a lot of us that have both limbs and both arms and both legs. We read stories and, and, and amazed at people that may lose both arms and start riding with their toes driving with their feet they moved on they didn't they didn't mean it was it was it was it was nice it didn't mean that it felt good but they allowed themselves to move on and realize that i can't just stay stuck right here it was hard it was bad it hurt it was hurtful it was dreadful it was embarrassing it was whatever but i've got to move on to see what else god has for me down here what does god have for me to do next if i lost the, uh, the old one arm then that means god's got something for me to do that only requires one arm. If I lost one leg, then God's got something for me to do that only requires one leg or he'll give me the other one and let me keep moving with a prosthetic, a prosthesis rather, for the whole mother leg but that is not the end of it. That there is a future. There's still something to look forward to. When God does not answer your prayers, look for him to open another door in your life and continue to move ahead. Look ahead because it's not over yet baby. you got more life in you. You have more to accomplish. You have more life to live. And I tell you that if you're dealing with sickness and, 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 and things ain't going the way we want them and we're fasting and we're praying, it's still okay because God's got that cover too. Because he said over in John, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me and my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you that God had prepared a place that even if you're about to leave this earth, which we all will one day, that God has prepared mansions on the other side and he didn't just stop saying that I, I, I got mansions over there he went on to say that I go to prepare a place for you I go to prepare a place for you that I'm all Always going to be out in front of you, making a way for you, preparing a place for you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. So even when life is on this side, my brothers and sisters, we can still look ahead because God has prepared a place for us that was not made by man's hands, that is designed actually for those that God love those that God are going to transition from this side to that side so it doesn't matter what we face in life even when it comes down to facing death he took the keys to death hell and the grave so that when it comes time to cross over we can just say goodbye and open our eyes say hello on the other side and we and, and, and welcome home welcome home so it ain't no end, end of all God's got the, he, he, it's about looking ahead. Looking ahead. You're going through some dark times right now. Look ahead. You got to cry sometimes. That's fine. But get up and smile sometime too. Get up and tell yourself that it is well with my soul. I don't care what's going on. It's well with my soul because God's got it either way. God's got it either way. It ain't over for me yet now that I've still got things to do for the Lord. Still have things to do for the Lord. Still have things to do for the Lord. What an awesome God we serve. What an awesome God we serve. What an awesome God we serve that no matter how much we go through and how much we pray and, and it don't go the way we want it, that he still look out for us. He still make a way for us. He still have something for us to look ahead to that even when it's all over, we can look for what's on the other side. We can still let our hearts not be troubled. Whatever you're facing today and you prayed and prayed and God didn't answer it. God didn't answer it. Don't beat up on yourself. Don't beat up on yourself. Even when sometimes it's going like with uh, situations where we may have even brought it, call it up on yourself. Don't just sit there and let people talk about you deserve it. You deserve it. God, he, 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 he chastened chasing those whom he loved. But he said that he throw it. When, once we get forgiveness and we repent, he throw it in the sea of forgetfulness. In the sea of forgetfulness. That's gone. God don't just keep trying to beat up on and beat up on and beat up on. We do that. But not God. Amen. When God doesn't answer your prayer, then turn over to Second Samuel and read how David responded. Read over how, how, what we just went through, how David responded 
when God didn't answer his prayer. And get on up from there. And I don't care what people think and, and, and think you're supposed to act like this and act like that. Situation you can't do nothing about, get on up from there. Get on up from there. Take a shower, clean yourself up, anoint yourself, worship and praise God, and look for what God have next. Look for what God have next. And those that want to stay back in the past, tell them bye. Stay on back there, but I'm going on ahead because God still have more for me. Don't sit there and throw a pity party for yourself over and over and over. <clears throat> Somebody passed, you can't bring them back. If I have my finger removed, my finger is removed. I can now function in life and look for what does God have for me without that finger, but I shouldn't sit back and just talk about, oh, if I only had my finger. Oh, if I only had my toe open, oh, if I only had my arm, if I only had my leg, if I only had my sight, if I only had uh, both eyes, if, 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 if they make something that can, can replace it, get that and keep moving. If they don't, adjust and keep moving. Keep moving, looking ahead. When God doesn't answer your prayer, prayers rather, keep trusting him, keep believing in him, and keep looking ahead. Because it's not over yet. There's still something ahead. There's something ahead. Even when life ends, there's still something ahead for us. I pray that you are blessed this morning. I pray that the word found you and that you received it. And that we act upon it. That our lives be even made better. I thank God for you tuning in. And if you want to say a quick <clears throat> prayer for you. And if you don't know the Lord and the pardon of your sins, let today be the day. Let today be the day that you accept him as your savior because there's something to look ahead to. When we come to God, then we have all that God have for us. And the ultimate reward is that he's going to prepare a place for us that where he is, we can be there also. Thank God for you. We're going to say a quick prayer. Father God, we ask that you continue to look upon each one of us. Touch our hearts, our souls, our minds. Strengthen us, O oh God, in areas that we are weak. Bless us, O oh God, to continue to hold on to your unchanging hands. Bless us, O oh God, to follow the examples you've given us in your word. That as we walk up right before you, as we trust you, as we believe you, as we pray unto you and fast unto you, O oh God, even when the, you don't answer the prayers the way we want them to be answered, that we would trust you and follow you and glorify you. Father, I ask that you look upon each and every person dealing with, with sickness, person dealing with bereavement. Lord God, those dealing with pain in their bodies, those dealing with any kind of situation, circumstance that they may be facing and let them know that you're still God, that you're still God and that we can still trust and depend upon you. We ask that you continue to bring us through, oh God, bless us to accept your word, accept your will for our lives. We thank you, we praise you, and we glorify you for it is in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. And as I close this in October, and <clears throat> they set it aside uh, to uh, as for breast cancer awareness month. Um, pray for those that are going through that 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 sickness and 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 and, and dealing with breast cancer. And, and 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 there's many people that I know that it's been 20 years, 25 years. So God is still able, and God is still healing people. And I have some people that have left here. And I honor them even this month, especially my, my godmother, uh, Alma Linda Collins, just a great, great person and a, such an influence in my life. And that was her diagnosis. And we still praise and God for her and honor her. And you may not can see this shirt is pink, but it's the acknowledging those and that uh, we're still praying with them and for them, those that are dealing with it. Be blessed. Have a wonderful day. In Jesus' name, amen.